Next on our pediatric roster of topics is gastroenteritis. It is an acute diarrheal disease with a rapid onset. It is a major cause of illness in young children. Most children recover from gastroenteritis without complications. However, a child can develop life-threatening dehydration if the illness is severe or prolonged and not properly treated. Acute gastroenteritis causes as many as 4.5 million deaths every year worldwide. In the United States alone, gastroenteritis results in 200,000 hospitalizations and 500 deaths in children younger than 5 years of age. Gastroenteritis is caused by viruses, bacteria, and parasites. In the United States, gastroenteritis is usually viral. The rotavirus is the most common causative agent for gastroenteritis in the United States and throughout the world. 90% of infections with rotavirus occur during the winter. Rotavirus is transmitted via the fecal-oral route. Children between the ages of 6 months and 2 years are most vulnerable. Rotavirus causes a majority of hospitalizations for severe diarrhea in young children. Bacteria can also cause gastroenteritis. Finally, intestinal parasites can also cause gastroenteritis. Most organisms that cause gastroenteritis spread from person to person through close contact. But there are other risk factors. They include lack of clean water, poor hygiene, poor sanitation, recent exposure to infectious organisms, recent travel to areas where there might have been exposed to pathogens, and exposure to contaminated food. The signs and symptoms of gastroenteritis vary somewhat, depending on the causative organism. Manifestations generally include the rapid onset of diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, weight loss, and fever. In more severe cases of diarrhea, the child may develop dehydration, electrolyte imbalances, and metabolic acidosis. The diagnosis of gastroenteritis is based on the child's history, physical examination, and laboratory findings. During history taking, ask the parents these questions. Have you traveled recently with your child? What medications is the child currently taking? What types of fluids is the child drinking? How well does the child tolerate fluids? Is the child vomiting? Is the child urinating more or less frequently? Does your child have diarrhea? How frequent are the stools? Are the stools watery? What color are the stools? Have you noticed any blood in the stools? Has the child had a fever? Does your child act sick? Next, weigh the child and then compare his current weight to his pre-illness weight. A loss of weight may reflect fluid loss. Carefully examine the child for signs of dehydration. Signs and symptoms of mild to moderate dehydration include dry, pale, cool lips, dry mucous membranes, decreased skin turgor, diminished urinary output, concentrated urine, thirst, increased pulse, and decreased blood pressure. Laboratory studies will show an elevated hemoglobin, hematocrit, BUN, and urine-specific gravity. Can you recall the signs of severe dehydration? Children with severe dehydration have anuria, very poor skin turgor, markedly sunken eyes, a rapid and thready pulse, and poor peripheral circulation with delayed capillary filling. Finally, inspect the child's perianal area for signs of irritation or skin breakdown from passing watery stools frequently. Stool cultures are ordered if the child has had fever longer than 24 hours, has persistent diarrhea, or has bloody stools. Nursing diagnosis include fluid volume deficit related to excessive loss of fluid in stools or emesis, altered nutrition, less than body requirements related to inadequate intake and severe diarrhea, risk for transmitting infection related to microorganisms in the gastrointestinal tract, and impaired skin integrity related to irritation due to frequent loose stools. The treatment of choice for children who have gastroenteritis is oral rehydration therapy, or ORT. It is a safe, effective, and less painful alternative to intravenous therapy. ORT is recommended for children who are dehydrated due to acute diarrhea because it replaces essential fluids and electrolytes. Some commercially prepared ORT solutions are Pedialyte, Infolyte, and Rehydrolyte. ORT can usually be done at home. The amount of ORT the child receives depends on the degree of dehydration. For example, instruct parents to give the child with mild dehydration 50 milliliters per kilogram of ORS over four to six hours. Children with moderate dehydration need 100 milliliters per kilogram of ORS over four to six hours. 
However, children with severe dehydration will require intravenous therapy with isotonic solutions until dehydration is reversed. Once dehydration has been corrected, parents can offer the child age-appropriate foods plus breast milk, formula, or cow's milk for older children. Older children should also be able to tolerate lean meats, fruits, and vegetables. The American Academy of Pediatrics no longer recommends the BRAT diet, that was bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast, because it does not provide adequate nutrition and can actually worsen diarrhea. During the child's rehydration, parents should also weigh the child every day at the same time and on the same scale. Instruct the parents to keep accurate intake and output records, including the number of wet diapers per day. Remind parents to wash their hands thoroughly after diaper changes. Also teach parents how to assess the child for dehydration and to notify the health care provider of any signs that the child is becoming worse, such as weight loss, confusion or disorientation, prolonged vomiting, continued diarrhea, blood in the stools, elevated temperature, decreased urination, and crying that produces no tears. The child with acute diarrhea also needs relief from skin irritation in the perianal area. To prevent skin irritation, instruct parents to change the child's diapers frequently. Wash the diaper area with water and mild soap after each bowel movement. Avoid using commercial baby wipes because they may contain alcohol. And apply soothing ointments to the area, such as zinc oxide or ointment with vitamins A and D. To prevent the spread of gastroenteritis, children with acute diarrhea should be kept out of daycare until the diarrhea has resolved. Parents, caretakers, children, and teachers should all understand the importance of hand washing. Emphasize that everyone must wash their hands after using the toilet, after changing a child's diaper, and before touching or eating food. Although it is a simple technique, hand washing provides a powerful defense against gastroenteritis and other infectious diseases.